Good morning. This is the Hellion Rocks. I'm excited to have a special guest in the house today. I have Mr. Ronnie Monroe. How are you, sir? Doing well. Thanks for having me on. Oh, beautiful. No problem. Um, Metal Church, I'm just going to jump in. You've got a brand new record, Generation Nothing, coming out. Uh, when is that album going to drop? Actually, I already dropped. It dropped on uh, Tuesday, I believe. Oh, beautiful. Excellent. So I yeah. haven't had a chance to, to, to hear it yet, uh, but uh, go ahead and let's talk about it, man. Tell me, tell me about the new record. Well, uh, in short, Kurt wrote, in my opinion, probably the best batch of songs uh, in my version of the band so far. Uh, you know, without chasing the past, he really uh, kind of there's a few songs on the record that are that harken back to the classic metal church days in my opinion it's a strong record um we did probably the most pre-production not probably we did the most pre-production that we've done out of all the records and i think that really paid off so the record's out people are giving it a pretty good response so far and well that's about it we hope it does well for us Beautiful. So you've got a, are you going to be doing a, a road tour for this record? Yeah, we've got something planned. They're uh, working it out right now. Something starting in mid February through mid March. We'll probably do two, two legs in the U.S. and then, uh, this summer playing for a couple festivals over in, uh, Europe at the end of June. And we're kind of waiting around. We're letting the record breathe for a couple weeks and uh, see what uh, we come up with offers. And then as soon as we have dates and all that, it will be on all of our sites for everybody to check out. Beautiful. And it's been it's been a while since Metal Church has got a new release. I think your last one was uh, The Present Wasteland, right? Correct. Yeah, I'm right. Yeah, I was just, you know, it's, it's, it's been a while, and um, I'm glad to see that, you know, you guys have, Got some rebirth going on, and you're going to you know, put out a. a um, I, you know, hopefully, I get a chance to check this record out real soon. But I'm assuming, like according to what you said, this, you know, if it's a kick ass record, it's going to make everybody real, real realize Metal Church. Yeah, you know, we were uh, to elaborate on that a little bit. We did knock a hold up our last show. Uh, we said we broke up, but basically, it was a long hiatus. We knew that one day we would get back together, and. You know, Bert called me up a few months ago and said, hey, I think the time is right. What do you think? And I said, yeah, let's let's do it. And uh, so, yeah, we're back. Uh, it's a strong record. And um, we're, we're going to be out there doing as much touring as we can as possible. During that time when the band was broken up and all that, yeah, everybody has their own stuff that we were doing. Uh, Kurt has Presto Ballet, which I did a couple records with him on that. Then I got the gig with trans Siberian Orchestra, and I went out and did a couple of uh, tours with them. Jeff Plate's got his own stuff, and so we all stayed busy, but we just decided that uh, the timing was right to get back together now, and we're here to stay. Beautiful. I'm, I'm glad of that. You know, I know you, you did have a, a past as a vocalist, but you, yourself, uh, did you start out as a drummer at one point in time? Yeah, yes, I did. Um, I played drums for probably eight, nine years, something like that, and um, yeah, it was a passion. Until I heard that certain vocalist and whatnot, and I, I wanted to be up for it, man. And that's kind of how that happened. So did, uh, did you, making that transition, did you have any formal training, or did you just uh, grab a microphone and, and wow everybody with that wonderful voice? <laughs> well, I don't think I was that great when I first started. I don't know how many people I wowed, but um, I was self-taught for many years. And then uh, probably it was like, 12, 13 years after I'd been singing already, I did go to, I took a few lessons from David Kyle, the maestro, who uh, taught Anne and Nancy Wilson of Heart, and Jeff Tate of Queensryche, Lane Staley of Alice in Chains, amongst, among others. So I went to him just for about five, six lessons to learn some breathing control and, and whatnot. But, uh, so yes, I have been trained, but I'm mostly self-taught. Nice. I know, uh, I, I have your um, Lords of the Edge CD, and uh, I really enjoy cool. that. You know, I, I enjoy your solo work, and you know I, I'm really looking forward to hopefully catching Metal Church on the road. Um, you know, you said Kurt wrote the record, but did you have any? Uh, you or anybody else have any input, or was it just a strictly a? a oh no! I, uh, this time around, well, it wasn't a bit different. Kurt was much more involved this time around on the previous records. 
I did the majority of the lyrical writing and a lot of the melody lines and the stuff. But this time around, you know, it was like when Kurt and I originally talked about this, because besides being a mastermind at writing music, he's also a great lyricist. I mean, he wrote a lot of the great stuff on the own. He wrote a lot of the lyrics and on the songs. He always has. So we talked about it, and that was just like, you know, and if I told him I would like it if he would actually do some more writing and, and whatnot, because the more he's into the record, uh, the better for us as a band and for the fans. And he was really, really into it this time, and he's, well, he's really excited about what's going on. We all are. So I did write uh, four songs. I've got four songs on there that I wrote lyrically, Suicidey, Hits Keep Coming, Media Whores, and uh, there was one more. I can't remember which one it is. But uh, he did the majority of lyrical writing this time around. Uh, the melody lines are a mixture, majority of uh, mine and his. Because, like I said, we did a lot of pre-production. And he sent me these songs months ago, and I, I did my thing. I wrote lyrics. I wrote melody lines. I went in my studio and recorded them. And then we went back and forth, sending stuff back and forth to one another, saying, yeah, that's cool. No, that sucks. Let's change this. Let's change that. And then, uh, you know, and that's kind of how it went. But I did do some writing, but not as much as I did on the previous. Do you find that when uh, when you have a band that writes as a whole unit that the uh, music translates better live and live performance, do they feel it more, or, or is it, that doesn't matter? You know what? It depends on the band. It, it depends on the, the people that you're working with. That we have not tried because since the beginning of this band, Kurt has, it's his band. He's a founding member and he's always written all the songs. What suggestions here and there? So basically, that's kind of the way we've always done it. But Kurt has mentioned that the next time around, we're going to try something like that to where we, uh, we all get in the room together and work on the songs there. And that way we can get everybody's input. So we're all excited about that as well. So that, that'll be new for us. So I'll let you know how that turns out. <laughs> I know, uh, you know, I've talked to several bands in the past, and it's been mixed results. You know, some bands, that that's how they solely write. They come, they all come together. Some bands just go in, they start jamming, and whatever comes out, comes out. And then some other bands bring in individual songs together. So cool. I hope I look forward to seeing what goes on with you guys. Right on. So Metal, metal Church, coming back to life, and in this time in the industry, what what is your uh, your take on the whole music scene right now? Well, my take on the music scene is <laughs> that I try to ignore the negatives as much as I can because that just brings me down, like such as stealing music and and things like that. And just know that I'm we're in good hands. You know, uh, I I brought Joe Brown and Matt Pack to the table for for this release for Metal Church. He's released my solo records, and they've done a great job. And I have the utmost faith that now so does Kurt and Joe there at Rat Pack for his promotional skills and and just the way he does things. So on that end, I, I can say that I feel safe. But, uh, you know, like I said, I try to ignore the, all that stuff, just do the record, get some dates, and go out and do what I do and do what we do. And, you know, this, the cards will play play themselves out. You know what I mean? Absolutely. I know, uh, I think a lot of people have, you know, I've, I've interviewed, talked to tons of people. I think a lot of people put too much weight in, in like you just said, the negativity instead of saying, you know what, screw it. We make good rock and roll music. We're going to get out and we're going to push it. And we're going to do our best to make sure everybody hears it. That's the plan. Yeah, man, and that's what that's what we're about, too. It's, just, it's, it's not worth, you know, worrying about it. I'll be honest, at the beginning of all that, you know, when I found out, say, for instance, my... The Fire Within, my first solo CD, I found out through BitTorrent sites that in Russia it had been downloaded for free like 30,000 times. Well, on one hand, that's flattering that that many people would actually want the record, but then do the math. You sell the, you sell the CD for 10 bucks, and if you have a 50-50 split with your label, which I did at that time, well, five times 30,000, you know? But hey, what are you going to do? Sit there and cry about it all day long and get pissed off? No, because it's not going to be, it's not going to do any good and you can't control it. What you have to do is just find someone or yourself to get, have the, get your pulse on the internet and just know how to use it. And there's programs out there to, that you can buy to, 
to teach you how to really use the Internet to your advantage, and I suggest that that's what people do. You know? Yeah, I agree. Because you can't, you can't, it's a double-edged sword, no matter what, no matter how you look at it, it's a double-edged sword. So, just try to stay positive and, and do the best that you can. Yep, that's what I do. And, and if you're in it, if you're truly an artist in it for the love of making music, then, you know, you're, you're going to find a way to do it. You know, I, I know a lot, there's a lot of people out there that they think that they're in it just for the money. And you can tell. You can tell people that are well, in it. Well, I appreciate you saying that. Love music. Yeah, and I should have mentioned that because I, I I should have mentioned that because that's part of my deal, and I know it's part of Kurt's as well. Yeah, I love money. We, we have to have it to survive. But I didn't. I didn't. When I was a kid and I wanted to become a rock star, it, it wasn't about chicks and beer. I know there's a lot of guys out there that, and a lot of guys I know personally that are in, in it for that reason. No, I was. In, I'm in it still to this day, and always will be for the love of music. I, I surely think that I was put on this earth to to do that. So I'm going to do it regardless. Now, don't get me wrong. There's been times where I've ripped my posters off the walls going, you know, what the hell's going on here? Just getting set up. But, you know, a couple of days or a few minutes later, the posters all go back up on the wall because I remember, you know, this is who I am. This is what I do. Right. And that's, uh, that's the way it is. You know, if you listen to, and, and I, I recently talked to, John Karabi about this, and uh, we we were discussing the fact that you can go back and listen to songs that were made by artists making the music that they love, and they're still long-standing, they're still fresh, they're still good to listen to, and you can hear songs that have come and gone because they were strictly written for money. So I'm very glad to hear that you're you know you're in it for the right reasons. Well, I appreciate that, man, and I think everybody should be in it for the right reasons. You know, I don't want to just churn out record after record after record just, you know, so I'm out there and, and people can buy my stuff. I want to make sure that it's quality. And and speaking of that, I do want to mention quickly here, and I'm sure you probably would touch on this, but uh, I am working on my third solo record, which was already written when ben, when Kurt called me to do Metal Church. So I figured, well, you know, I could shelf it for a while, but the record's too good. So it's called Electric Wake. And it's going to be coming out, uh, coming up here pretty soon. I wanted to make sure I mentioned that. Nice. Okay, I'm looking forward to that. You know, I've, I've always dug, um, you know, your style of singing. I, I, I always dug the stuff you've done. You know, I, I kind of running and roll has been, you know, on my radar for, for quite a while. You know, Trans-Siberian Orchestra, I love those guys. You know, um, I know I, I really haven't gotten into Presto Ballet, but I know you did a little bit with uh, Lillian Axe, too. How was that? Yeah, you know, basically, great guy. Steve Blaze, uh, you know, very good guy. A really good writer, good guitar player, good person. But, you know, those, that band was, uh, I have to be honest, uh, was not the right choice for me. It was not the right kind of band for me. Uh, they, you know, they brought me in. Uh, we did a couple shows, and... You know, nothing against them. There's just certain styles of music that some people should do and, and some that shouldn't. And uh, I just, it just wasn't me. So after we did a couple of shows, I called Steve and we talked about it. And I said, you know, I'm just not the right guy for you guys, you know, and I think you need to find someone else. So amicably, you know, we, we split on that. And then they went their own way and found a new singer and they're doing well. And uh, that's pretty much what happened with that, you know. So I was searching. I was trying to get back up to that level and, and all that, and it just didn't work out. Nice. Um, you know, the last time I heard from Metal Church, and it's still an album I listen to quite a bit, was This Present Wasteland. It's a, you know, I think that's a great record. How, uh, how would you say that your new record stacks up to that one? Well... I I really like this present wasteland. Yeah, I mean I think there's some really great songs on this present wasteland. Uh, it's a little a little negative, I think, a little droning maybe. I think you could have had a couple more upbeat songs on the record. But uh, how does this one compare? It's different. As I said before, I think uh, Kurt has really touched on the old sound and the new sound of the band both with the song that he's written this time. And uh, overall, I just think this record is a stronger, the songs are stronger. That's my opinion on it. 
I'm glad to hear it. I know uh, you guys are working with Rat Pack Records now, a great bunch of people. Um, you know, I've done some stuff with them in the past. I'm, I'm glad to see that, you know, it seems like Rat Pack cares a lot about uh, their, their artists, so I'm glad to see that you're hooked up with that people. Oh, well, thank you. And, yes, to elaborate on that just quickly, yes, they've done a, a wonderful job for me and now doing a, just a bang-up job on this new Metal Church CD, Joe O'Brien and Tina Peak and Jen. Uh, they're very valuable for us and for me. I mean, I, you know, Joe's got it going on. I'll just say that. That's awesome. It's glad to see that, you know, and I know the, the industry label-wise kind of took a, a dump, but, you know, there's a few labels that managed to survive. Granted, they're not the big powerhouses from the past, but like Rat Pack Records, they're, they're, they're getting, they've got their publicists out there. They're doing a good job. They're doing a good job of marketing. And there, there seems like, like I said, they're behind the band. So again, I've got to thank uh, Jen in particular set this interview up, and I'm, I was really excited to have this happen. Well, right on, man. Yeah, and you know, another thing I'll mention just quickly as well is that I trust them. I can trust yeah. Joe, and that's for me. That's that's <laughs> saying a lot because I don't really trust anybody. But uh, Joe, I do trust the handling all my stuff and everything like that. So, and that's a good feeling to have, especially in this industry. Yeah, it is. It's nice. So a, a little, uh, uh, I want to touch again on the, uh, the new album is Generation Nothing. Um, you got a little insight on the, the name of that record, where that came from? Uh, the, the title? Yeah, the title of the record. Yeah, okay. Well, basically, yeah, that was uh, one of Kurt's uh, song titles. And, yeah, basically Generation Nothing. It's kind of talking about the kids today and just the, the circumstances that they're faced with, you know, it's all digital, you know, yeah. kids don't come home and go ride their bikes and go play football, or at least most don't, you know, it's not like when we were kids, you know, and now it's all about going home and, you know, closing your door in a dark room and playing Call of Duty or whatever the hell it is, you know, and then the, you, know, you, you go to the mall, kids are, you know, texting and bumping into the walls and bumping into one another, cause, you know, so it's basically kind of about that. You know, generation nothing, and hopefully one day uh, it, it'll get better. But I don't know. Not to be negative. Yeah, I, <laughs> um, you and I, uh, you and I are exactly the same age. So that's, you know, that's something else that I, you know, I want to want to hit on is the fact that, you know, I know you and I would go get a hard copy record from the store and race home, rip the rip the plastic off, read the liner notes, and listen to it. You know, like you said, and then we go out and tell our friends, and you know, we didn't spend a Ignoring that amount of time inside, you know, we got we did we did things outside a lot, and we would I think go to shows and we would go hang out more than kids do now. So I'm really hoping that. Well, yeah. Well, I was gonna say it's a, it's it used to be an event, James, as as you know. I mean, I remember standing going, uh, you know, getting excited a week prior to going and standing out in the cold and in line at Tower Records waiting for the new Dio record or the new Kiss record to be released at midnight. You know, we made an event out of that. And, and then you got bought your LP, you brought it home, and as you just said, rip the plastic off there and open it up. You, maybe you got a free poster, uh, a sticker or whatever, but you read the liner notes and find out, you know, you were reading the special things. You felt part of it. You know, you felt part of the release. You know, and but with that said, that's with Joe and what he's doing with the bundle packs, the pre-orders and all that kind of thing. I I really dig what he's doing with that. You know, he's kind of bringing that back, which is really cool. But you just don't have that anymore. You know, and I, I do miss that. I know recently I've had, you know, a hard time myself. I'm I'm in New Mexico, you know, and uh, waiting for a brand new release. I'm, I'm that guy that I still go buy the CD because I like the liner notes. I can, like you said, I'm... I'm not one about, you know, all about digital stuff, but I, I love to run to the store, and it's hard anymore to find a hard place to buy a physical copy. You know, you, you run into the store, and it's shoved in the back corner. There's a music section, and maybe if you're lucky, you can find something. But, um, you know, I agree. We need to get back to having uh, you know, hard copies with stuff, you know. That's yeah, awesome. hard copies in the mom-and-pop shops, you know, but I, who, I don't know how – you know, uh, if and when we're really going to get a lot more of those mom and pop shops out there because of the big conglomerates. But, uh, you know, just support whoever's left. Every city has a mom and pop record store, you know. So, 
get out there and support those places and buy your stuff from them. If not, you know, you go to iTunes, Amazon. Our CD is available everywhere, you know, just about. But, uh, yeah, so if you've got one of those shops, support it. And another thing, if you're forced to buy it online, make sure you go to the artist website and buy it from there if you get that opportunity. It's it's well worth it. Correct. You know, go to the artist website or at least the label that is, that's handling all their stuff, like, like Rat Pack. But you can go to Mental Church, our Facebook, and, and pre-order or get, or get it from there. Like I said, you can get it just about anywhere. But support your artists. That's an important thing. Support. That's right. Support your artists. And when you go out to see the show, you know, buy that T-shirt, buy that sticker, buy what you can. You know, that money goes right into the pockets of the artists, which is where it should be. And um, you know, get out and support. Tell your friends about it. Let's start. Let's start a movement in this country to get people hanging out again. That I think that's what we've lost. You know, like you said, I remember hanging out with lots and lots of people. You know, listening. I got turned. I got turned on to different bands from hearing somebody else talk about it. And we weren't fighting. We weren't. You know, everybody wasn't staring at their phones. We were standing there talking, having conversations, meeting new people at an event. There you go. Exactly. Just you know, meeting people, talking, and and interacting with human beings. You know, we are missing that. But without standing on a soapbox and all that kind of stuff, we all do need to support the metal scene. And recently, I've seen a lot of things like on Blabbermouth of guys saying how the metal scene is not united and and this and that. And I agree with a lot of these guys because it's there's so many shit talkers out there. And it's like you know, listen. In times of need, in times of problems, and, and things like that, instead of banding together to make things better, as we should, we drift further apart. So I, and I still can't figure that out. But if we can just, everyone can realize that and just say, you know what, I'm going to make an effort, you know, to, to make things better, then things would get better. But anyway, like I said, I don't want to preach. You know, I, I'm, I'm going to preach just a second here. You know, that's my goal, you know, and, and, and you know, I don't get paid for this. I do this for the love of music. You know, I, I found myself in a situation where I've been on both sides of the coin, or, you know, being a musician and not, and now I find myself in a position where I can talk about it and talk to artists, and, you know, I don't take a stance on, on anything. It's rock and roll music, and what we've got to do is tell other people. Back in the day when we first got started, you know, we didn't have the internet. We we only had paper print. You know, we only had print magazines. And you, I found out about other bands by people telling me. I told people about the bands I found, but you know, I told them. And that's what I'm trying to do right now. I'm using the internet as a tool to share the music that I find and I love with other people without an agenda, other than that. Well, good for you. And I'll be I'll have you back on that. So. Uh, Rhyme Row, Metal Church, Generation Nothing, out on Rat Pack Records everywhere. I will be picking a copy of that up. Um, my country, I mean, my, my blog is sitting in 145 countries, listened to by several thousand people a week. So the floor is yours to talk about whatever you want to talk about. But you, I appreciate the time and good talk. And hopefully you, uh, on your tour, you make it through New Mexico, and uh, I give you a chance to shake your hand and uh, take some photos write a review of the show, it's what I do, and spread the word. Definitely. You know what, check, check that schedule when we have our dates and all that, and uh, you hit me up and we'll work something out, all right? For sure. Very cool. Um, www.ronniemonroe.com. Uh, look at Rat Pack Records. And Metal Church, you can find them at www.metalchurchmusic.com. Make sure you go check them out and look them up on Facebook, give them a like. Go to the Rat Pack Records website, order a bundle, get your T-shirt on, tell people the Metal Church is out. They're ready to bring their hard rock and roll back to your ears. This is the Hellion from the Hellion Rocks, Ryan Monroe from Metal Church. We'll talk soon. Thanks for having me, man. Take-